So you know, people were looking for this meson, and um, I guess well, I don't have a lot of time. Um, let's see. Um, so let me just quickly tell you the context where people were looking for this meson. The context where people were looking for the meson is in the cosmic rays. Do you guys remember a brief discussion of cosmic ray when we were doing special relativity? No? Yes, no? What are cosmic rays made of? Like what did I, I think I gave you a short description of what cosmic rays were. Does anyone remember? Yeah, high energy particle from the universe. So what cosmic rays are high energy, mostly protons, coming from extra uh, Earth, po probably extra solar, possibly extra galactic sources. So let me just uh, um, show you what's called a picture or artist rendering of what's called a cosmic ray shower. So uh, air shower? Mm -hmm. Let me, uh, so it, it's a, just a rendering to illustrate what's involved in cosmic rays, I guess. This is probably good, or maybe this. Mm, they're both Pinterest, uh, wait, not both. Um, I thought I had a picture I liked. Mm, that's the artist's rendering. Mm, uh, okay, I think I'm just gonna go with this one. From Pinterest, but that's fine. Looks like it's a good image. So, um, okay, I hate Pinterest. <laughs> Let me go to the non Pinterest picture. Like, why is it having me log in to just to look at the. Okay, there it is. Um, I don't know how well you can kind of see it. Um, so, what I've been calling high energy proton, that's the primary cosmic ray. So this is the initial proton that's uh, impacting our upper atmosphere. And it really doesn't matter what it is. I call it, keep calling it, I guess um, it does matter that it's a, a baryon, so that it undergoes a strong interaction. So in this uh, interaction point, what it does is it, because it's uh, so energetic, it produces many different particles. And some of those particles are other nuclei that produ gets produces, and some of the particles are what's called the pion that we'll talk about really quickly. And some of the, I guess that's it. So these pions are what's called the secondary rays. And these secondary rays are composed of, um, composed, so pions are unstable particles. Um, these unstable particles will quickly decay into additional particles. Um, pi on pi plus, it should decay into ah, neutrino and muon. So this muon is, I think we've mentioned the muon, right? So this muon is the tertiary uh, cosmic ray particle. You started at the primary high energy proton that produced some very short-lived pi on, and then that Shortly, lived the pion decaying produced the muon, which is also not that long lived. It lives for like two microseconds. But when people detect cosmic rays on the ground level here, what they are looking for and what they are detecting are these muons. Okay. So, um, pip so before the invention of particle accelerators, this was the only source of unstable particles that don't just uh, exist lying around. They all have really short lifetime scales. This, um, let's see, I don't know if I remember all the numbers. So muon lives for about two times 10 to minus six seconds. Oh, this, what, this is what the booklet is for. I can look up. The, so I do know for a fact that the positive, the charged pions live for a shorter length of time. So let me just look it up. Um, so pi, lepton summary, meson quarks. OK, I'm almost there. Pi on is at the beginning of the meson table. So pi plus mean life is 10 to minus 8 seconds. And that's actually super long. So this lives for about 
10 to minus 8 seconds. And I say that's super long because these neutral pions, they actually decay more quickly. They live for about 10 to minus 10 seconds. So, so um, these pions and uh, the muons are the first of the uh, previously unknown uh, new particles to be detected. And to wrap up this story of Yukawa's meson, I will tell you that the very first of the, the first of these two common uh, cosmic ray particles to be to, to be detected is actually the muon. So this uh, muon used to go by the name uh, mu meson because when people did the experiment with the, like with that um, cloud chamber picture with the positron, when they look, um, so I think it's message like 106. Let me look up just to be sure. <laughs> um, when they measure the mass of the muon, the mass was, yeah, 105.7. So the mass of the muon was about 105.7 MeV over C squared. So when people first discovered the muon, they were excited. This is a new particle. We haven't seen it before. And its mass is uh, right in the range that Yukawa predicted for this new particle, which is necessary to mediate the nuclear interaction. But that excitement was a short lived because when you look at the details of the, how muon behaves, is, um, it, it doesn't behave anything like it's a strong interaction force mediator should. For one, it doesn't seem to be interacting via strong force. It goes through materials more easily than electron does. In fact, the muon, as people study it more and more, kind of behaves like an unstable, heavier version of electron. So today, we identify muon as the second lepton. So it's the mu meson, that's the old name. So people don't call that mu meson anymore because it's very confusing. Meson is a different category of particle than lepton and baryon. So we now call it simply muon. And that's the name you have seen in when we do special relativity. And what this is, is a second lepton. And what you will begin to see is that the name lepton and baryon become misnomers pretty quickly. Because some of the things that we call lepton are actually heavier than proton. <laughs> but the name, the lepton and baryon, their classification really has more to do with different types of forces, they interactions they participate in. So muon, the way you should think of it is it's like an electron in almost every sense, um, except it's heavier and it's uh, uh, unstable. And it's like electron in the sense there's a neutrino that's associated with muon. That's what this neutrino here is. This is not an electron neutrino, that's a muon neutrino. Uh, so it's in a dotted line because you don't really see it, but you assume their existence based on the, how muon goes. Um, so it took people a little bit longer, a few more years, be, until they actually detected this pion, which was harder to detect because it's a shorter lived. And um, so people had to go up higher up in the mountains to see particle tracks that they could identify as, oh, that's not muon. It doesn't look like a muon track. It's a pion track. And when you look at the mass of the pion, let me look it up to be sure again. So the mass of the pion is, so the neutral version and the charged version, they have slightly different masses. I will give you the mass for the charged pion. So mass of the charged pion, pi plus minus, they are particle, antiparticle of each other. The mass of the pion is about uh, 139.6 MeV per C squared. So this is still in the, it's still in the correct range for Yukawa's meson. And um, this is now confirmed as Yukawa's meson. So the early model of uh, nuclear interaction, the strong force, is to treat um, interaction between neutrons and protons. So interaction between neutrons and protons as being mediated by exchange of pions. So, oh, I guess, uh, yeah, exchange of 
pi ions. So if you are trying to, I guess it has to be neutral pi ions <laughs> by exchange of pi ions. So if you are drawing Feynman diagram, it might look something like this. So how the, the nucleus is bound together, you might think of it as well. I have a neutron coming in. I have a neutron going out. Proton coming in. Proton going out. And the way this interaction is mediated is by the neutral pi ion. Now, this is the early model. Um, both uh, all, these, all these three particles are composite particles made up of what we now call quarks. So um, in the quark model, it becomes, um, so there's even more fundamental underlying picture. But, um, but this is a kind of starting place. And once you kind of think of it this way, you can have more fun with it. You can um, kind of, because you know there are three different types of pions, right? If, or I just told you there are three different types of pions. And uh, so when you draw the diagram this way, the only way you can draw it is with a neutral pion to conserve charge here. But that's actually not the only way you can draw it. You can actually draw it this way. You can have this uh, neutron going to proton and this proton going to this neutron. Then what you would say is the neutron, well, to turn into proton, you must uh, emit uh, pi plus. So that, and this pi plus getting, wait, sorry, pi minus. You must emit pi minus so that you have neutral particle coming in, positive and negative particle going out, so the charge is conserved. So this pi minus getting absorbed by this turns proton into neutron. So, um, so this is the early model of a strong interaction. And what we'll go over on Tuesday next week is the standard model as it stands today with the discretion of quark model. But I have to do a little bit of an introduction to where quark model comes from. And that takes another three hours. Well, not three hours, but including that, that takes another three hours.